legend in town, Tamara <laughs> Shoemaker. Um, so uh, Tamara is, gosh, she's been doing the show for what, two years? Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Seems Tamara like runs the Cyber Patriot program in the state. And uh, that's, uh, I'll let you explain it, but it's a great program for uh, high school kids, I think middle school even, uh, if they want to get exposed to the idea, of maybe someday working as a cybersecurity professional, this would be a good first place to start, right? Absolutely. I mean, we try to get them where, where they live, right? So cyber competitions are something, you know, cyber games, you know, all of their video games are the things that they love and do. And so Cyber Patriot was an easy, uh, easy way to pick up and get these kids involved. Actually, Cyber Patriot is K through 12. So in, in kindergarten through fifth grade, they have uh, free games that they can download, free video games that they can download. And they are not, they don't know it, but they're learning cybersecurity awareness. Uh, with those three games and they're getting to play these games and, and learn different levels and learn all these lovely things about cybersecurity. And then when they turn in, when they get into middle school is when we start working on them with the competition. So they take all that information that they learned when they were younger about how to keep themselves safe. And they start learning how, about how to keep their system safe and how to keep their own personal PCs safe and people around them safe. And so they start the competition. And so, you know, it's an exciting way for them to get a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, uh, an exposure to what these kind of career fields can be. And so we have plenty of activities for them to do year round. The competition starts um, in October and goes through uh, March and it's very exciting and it's low cost. So it's low barrier. And so that's why I picked it up. It's going to be seven years now, Mike, that I've been mm. working on this uh, on the side and around my job and all that kind of good stuff. To try to increase the amount of people, the amount of people who are getting into cybersecurity um, in, at the higher a higher education level. We have to inspire them younger. We're losing them in middle school um, uh, in in the tech areas, and so we want to encourage them. And this is one of the ways that we can do that. So let's let's give people a fifty thousand foot overview of the Cyber Patriot program to start with. Okay, so Cyber Patriot, well, we have both middle school and high school folks. We can have a team made up of two to five players. They can be uh, from a high school. They can be from a Boy Scout troop, a church group, a rec center group, any of those kinds of groups. You just have to have two to five people. They come together. They meet together. They put their own schedule together for when they practice. And then once a month, they have a round. And it's a virtual round where they're competing nationally against everybody in the country that are playing. We have about 180 some players or teams in the Michigan and overall in the country, we have over 6,000. So those are all the folks that they're competing against. There's three levels of play so that anyone can get into it. So you have the silver, gold, and platinum. So the, the gold or the silver is folks that are just getting into this. And then you've got the platinum for kids that could reverse engineer the game if they actually wanted to. But ethics is a really big part of this. And so that's very much frowned upon. And so, you know, you're going to get into the cybersecurity world. You have to understand that this is a very ethical place to be. Um, just because I, I talk to the kids all the time, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And so we need to make sure that these guys are all cyber heroes to protect not to, to uh, you know, to invade. Um, uh, it's very low barrier to entry. It's only $205 for a high school team to play or $165 for a middle school play. Um, all girl teams are free. Uh, Title I schools are free. Um, and so that's the other piece that's easy. The fact that there's only two to five uh, PCs required to do this um, and it's virtual. So there's also no, you don't have to have big sales in order to do travel to anywhere. It's all virtual during the leading rounds. Now, when you go to finals, that is in person when possible, right? Not during the COVID. They did make it virtual during COVID. But um, you're also, that's also no expense to you. That $205 that you paid to get in gets you into the finals if you make it into that round. Huh. So what's the next for Cyber Patriot? So here in Michigan, or you know, in general, just the next piece that, that, that comes on is we're into nationals. Uh, so nationals is coming up soon. We um, are going to be having um, our uh, nationals. It's, uh, uh, it's going to be virtual again this year. Um, it's happening uh, this next month, 17th through the 21st of March. They'll go head to head. Uh, there'll be 28 teams that go head to head. Um, sad to say, Michigan's not in the finals again this year. Um, one of the things I'm really working hard at trying to break and trying to get some teams from Michigan in there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you, you know, you, places you would expect are hitting real, real heavy, like Texas and California and those kind of places where 
um, they took to the cyber patriot and, 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 you know, you have Silicon Valley and all that kind of lovely stuff right out that out there. Um, those kinds of teams are the ones that are in nationals, but I'm not going to give up hope on Michigan. I know that we're burgeoning in those areas and we'll continue to grow. And so that's why I come to you uh, once a month and talk about cyber patriot. All right. So what can our viewers uh, of this podcast do to help the, the Michigan cyber patriot program? What do you need? Actually, we need a lot of little little things. So, like all the volu- all the volunteer groups, uh, charities over the last two years during COVID, you know that was a very difficult time, right? So we went from 180 teams to down to 150 teams, but we have kind of you know leveled off. And so, we'll, in order for us to continue to grow and to continue to move forward, we need folks to step forward and become mentors. And so, we either mentor to a team that's already established that, that already has a coach, or become a coach or a mentor to a team maybe in their own school district. Um, and we have plenty of ways to help you get there um, step by step. We have, you know, even we even have classes, right, to tell you exactly how to get there. And then once you become a volunteer, there's a ton of resources on sort of how you can help your team. You don't even need to be an IT, you know, a, a cybersecurity expert, right? What you need to be able to do is feel comfortable with um, uh, being with kids at, you know, in high school, middle school and high school kids and help them explore how to get there, right? So the whole point of this is for them to learn in teams how to do these things. And, you know, they get free Cisco and they have Microsoft and they have Linux and they have all kinds of good tools and good things to do, but they need, you know, someone to help show them the way and also to be an example to them, right? So we want um, a diverse population to come and volunteer to do those things. We also need some really sort of nuts and bolts kind of things too. So we we need physical support. And we need also monetary support, right? And as any charity does in order to, to, to you know, have the things that you want to do. So we have an award ceremony coming up that we started a couple of years ago where our state level folks um, uh, get trophies. So that needs to be supported. And then we have our summer, summer camps coming up that needs to be supported. Um, one of the things we're going to try to do with our summer camps, just like the uh, MTWC did, we went to a virtual popu- uh, virtual sort of um, a blended version last year where we were in person in some places and we were virtual in other places. And what I learned is that I can sort of um, divide and conquer and do in a whole lot bigger area. Um, by doing it in a blended uh, method where I have really experienced folks that are doing the, and that have been doing it for years with me and being instructors and they're virtually. And then we have satellites where we have different venues where the kids are coming in. And at that venue, they have folks that are IT savvy and can help walk them through problems, but maybe not know all of the ins and outs about the Cyber Patriot program, but the instructors will be coming into them virtually, right? So then they're there hands-on helping the students get through what they're, what they're doing. Um, and, and then you have the people who are instructing, you know, are doing that virtually. And so I can kind of do a really big swath in a big area um, all at one time. Okay. We still need those venues. We need people to step up and help um, and, and get all of that done. And then there's just the nits and, you know, the sort of... Uh, Back, back, back behind the, the stage, behind the curtain stuff, right? That, that any kind of charity needs that we still need volunteers for as well to continue to do this wonderful program across Michigan. And sponsors as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you just can't do this, uh, you know, working on my grocery bill or something, you know, here, money, uh, you know, so it, and, but it's, but again, the thing that's really cool about this is because it's supported by the AFA, which is a, you know, a national association for the Air Force, it, 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 it's not expensive, right? So it's 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 not cost prohibitive. It doesn't take that much to get us going and to keep us going. And so that's the, the thing that's very very helpful to us. It's not a barrier. Um, but yes, we do still need it. I mean, I can't buy I can't buy trophies unless I have money to buy trophies. You know, I can't uh, you know get the candy that we we hand out during the camp and you know the workbooks and all that kind of lovely stuff and T-shirts. You know, all that stuff costs money for sure. We need that. Sure. And let's talk a little bit about the background there that you have talking about green screens, auto ISAC. Now I know you've been there, what, six, six months, months a year? Now. Yeah, six months has gone by. I'm okay. just so surprised. It's, it's funny. It's been, you know, uh, it, it, you know it, it, the thing that's cool about it is it's a continuation of my goal, right? So I worked at the higher education for 17 years, and that's when I discovered that we needed more people in the pipeline, more kids in the pipeline, right? That there is just no way we can, we can supply the need for out there for cybersecurity people with the trickle that we were getting, you know, uh, that are coming into our programs. We have a lot of great programs across the state of Michigan. We're very fortunate 
wanted to have over 14 centers of excellence is in this stuff. But getting them in the pipeline is very, very, very important, right? Getting them inspired early and often. And so uh, this was an, a really cool transition into the auto ISAC because at this very moment, the auto ISAC is putting together their own training. So their own cybersecurity training for the autos by the autos. So it's not, they're not having somebody else tell them what they need to teach and what they need to know for boots on the ground to work in the auto industry. They're doing it themselves. And so I'm uh, in, in charge of uh, the program, you know, manager for that program and it's called ACT. So Automotive uh, Cybersecurity Training. We partner with universities to work on this. So the first, we have a, a basic level of training for folks and then we have an advanced level. And the basic level is for folks um, for, for, for the current employees and new employees that haven't had cybersecurity, but are going to need to have cybersecurity in order to work in the departments and the places that they're working, right? So they may be engineers, they may be IT folks that didn't have that background. They have a great, you know, great resume, except for they have that missing, right? And so that onboarding piece is so difficult for all of us. And in, 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 in the in, you know, automotive industry, it's even more because you need to know sort of two cultures, right? You need to know what it is you know, the auto culture, and then now cybersecurity. And so we're kind of trying to get that up to speed and get it quickly so that there's not quite so long of a learning curve for them. So we have this nice fundamentals courses that we partner with universities to do, and they do that basic cybersecurity things. And that's uh, three weeks of intensive courses all day long. Um, to get them through that those first basics there, and then and then we do uh, an advanced training that then is does you know the, the hands on stuff, and this is when they get to actually get in there and work on these you know can buses and all of the circuits and all the things, all the you know connectivity that they have, and actually really get their arms around all of the wireless and you know all of the things that they have to do only specific to the auto industry, right? Transportation industry. Um, and that's in person. And we're going to be doing those in uh, four weeks there. Uh, each, each course block runs a week. It's very intensive. It's boots on the ground. We're going to be doing that over at the American Center for um, uh, Mobility over in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And uh, that will be starting in uh, April. So we're looking forward to that. We did just finish our first fundamentals too, of February 18th, which was my birthday. I thought that was a great celebration for ending our first alpha in the basics. And so we ran 50 uh, students through that first cohort and then we'll run a uh, hundred students through the uh, hands-on uh, uh, shortly. All right, well, tell us how to get a hold of uh, you at Otto Isaac and then also at the, uh, how to get a hold of the uh, Cyber Patriot program. Sure. So at the auto uh, ISAC, uh, I, I did put it in the chat. So it's Tamara Shoemaker, my full name at automotiveisac.com. And then for the Michigan Cyber Patriot Program, if you want to help me in this endeavor to get kids more inspired and get more people in the pipeline, it's at micyberpatriot.com. 